Hey everybody, it's BuildnerDude35 with this week's tutorial on how to make sumo bots. So, first things first, this is another one of those fan suggested tutorials. And you guys remember you can suggest a topic for a tutorial at any time, and it could become an official BuilderDude35 tutorial at some point. So, anyway, back to the tutorial. Um, this video is all about my opinion on what you should keep in mind when making your sumo bot to make it the best it can be. And I don't have a sumo bot right here now to show you and demonstrate live to you, but I have already made a sumo bot and I'll be referring back to that sumo bot and showing you pictures of what I did to give you an, an example of what I did. So now let's get to it. So the first thing you have to do before you even start building your sumo bot is think what kind of sumo bot am I going to build and what is my strategy going to be? Now there's multiple routes you can take. Are you going to build a big hulking sumo bot that moves around slowly but has a lot of power to bulldoze the opponents out of the way? Are you going to build a faster sumo bot that's maybe lighter and can evade a bulldozer type sumo bot? Or are you going to take it a step further and are you going to spend more time on your programming and software and make an intelligent sumo bot that uses all kinds of gadgets and special tactics to win the battle as opposed to brute force? So now you've defined your strategy and you're ready to start building. The first important thing to keep in mind when you're building your sumo bot is make a really good sturdy chassis. And what is a chassis? It's essentially the frame that your robot is built off of. And what you want is you don't want the chassis to wobble at all if you were to say slap it a little bit and um, you want it to be very strong and sturdy because you don't want another sumo bot to hit into you and then it starts wobbling all over the place and it becomes very inefficient. Now this is my sumo bot that I built, Kimosabi. You'll see here what I did with my chassis is I put a bumper that goes around the perimeter of the entire robot and I very highly recommend it because not only does it make the chassis very strong but it prevents the other sumo bot from reaching inside and kind of uh, tampering with your moving parts like say your wheels or anything else that you might have in there and it just protects the entire robot. Now the next crucial detail of your sumo bot is what kinds of wheels that you're going to use and to decide this you're going to go back to your strategy and use your strategy to decide what wheels you want to use. So anyway the rule of thumb is that a small wheel like this one here is going to have more torque but it's going to make your robot move slower and torque is just a kind of like a fancy word for power or raw moving force. Now a taller wheel by contrast is going to sacrifice torque or power but it's going to make your robot faster so it can evade a slower robot so it's swifter more agile. Or a third option you can take is to use a tank track like what I have here and these are pretty inefficient and they're not very fast at all but since they have such a uh, all of these little rubber feet here they are going to give you the best traction now whatever wheel you decide to choose make sure that it has enough traction to push uh, another object out of the field because that's the objective of a sumo game to move your opponent and if your wheel doesn't have enough traction it doesn't matter how much effort you put into building your sumo bot it, the wheels will just spin and you won't be able to win at all. So now we come to sensors and sensors are good to use only if you plan on actually programming them to do something and there's all kinds of different sensors that you can use for different things. For example you can use a proximity sensor like the infrared sensor or ultrasonic sensor to detect your opponents and know when to ram them and another good sensor to use is the mind sensor sumo eyes because it's a proximity sensor that sees in front, right, and left planes. But you can only really use this if, as long as your sumo competition doesn't have restriction to Lego parts because this is not a Lego manufactured sensor. You should also use color sensors in the front and maybe back, well, just generally on the edge of your robot so your robot can detect the edge of the, the arena so it's not just driving out randomly and then you automatically lose. A good idea is also to use a touch sensor on your bumper or on your back of the robot so your robot can detect when it's being pushed from behind or the side and it can counter the opponent. 
So now we come down to something that's probably not as essential as the other things, but is very fun to incorporate, and that is gadgets. And what I mean by that is like a creative mechanism that is going to help you give the upper hand on the battlefield. So the most common gadget I've seen on sumo bots is a type of forklift that raises up the front wheels of the opponent's sumo bot. Now with your front wheels lifted off the ground, your drive wheels, your robot can't fight back against your opponent and your opponent can just push you out of the arena. So what I did with Kimosabi is I found an, uh, an inventive strategy to circumvent this. And what I did, what I did is I had a uh, forklift evasion system, which is essentially a jack that when it detected it was being picked up off the ground, the jack would come down and raise it even farther off the forklift, and then it could pivot away from the forklift, so it would be able to evade the forklift. So that's just one of the gadgets that I did. And like I said, there's infinite possibilities, and you can get really creative with these. So lastly, we come to programming, and programming is going to really reflect your strategy, and how much work you're going to have to do is also based on your strategy and what kind of gadgets or sensors you're using. Now your program has to utilize all of your gadgets and sensors that you're using, otherwise they're just useless parts that are there for no reason. Also, if you're using a large arena, it's going to be a good idea to write a good seeking al algorithm, because you need to be able to find your other opponent before you attack them. Uh, conversely, if you're using a small arena, a, ser a searching algorithm is not that uh, necessary. So you don't have to spend too much time on programming on a smaller arena. Also, if you use more advanced programming, that could be part of your strategy that could give you an upper hand on the field. Whereas a bulldozer robot might not need so much programming because it just relies on brute force. So thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I do tutorials like this every Thursday, and some of them are FLL based. And also, if you get a chance, check out my website for some more comment, uh, content like downloads and stuff. And just keep the requests coming, guys. I'm, I'm very grateful to have so many requests. So uh, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.